Dr. Christian's office. And it's the Vaseline program, the only program in radio where the audience writes the scripts. Tonight, the spotlight picks out Los Angeles, California, and the winner is Ray Appleby of 301 Whitmer Street for his prize play, Susan Comes Marching Home. Starring Gene Herschel as Dr. Christian with Rosemary DeCamp in the role of Judy Price. Men, watch out for dry scalp. Yes, dry scalp robs you of an important asset in business and social life. Good grooming. If you have dry, unruly hair, if you're bothered with loose dandruff or itchy scalp, remember, these are signs of dry scalp. Start using Vaseline hair tonic today and effectively check dry scalp. Vaseline hair tonic actually supplements the natural scalp oils, contains no alcohol or other drying ingredients, works with nature, not against it. Just five drops a day keeps dry scalp away. Yes, just five drops of Vaseline hair tonic applied daily with comb or directly on the hair checks dry scalp keeps hair good looking and neatly in place. Also, a brisk Vaseline hair tonic massage before each shampoo loosens dandruff, relieves itchy tightness. Remember, more bottles of Vaseline hair tonic are sold today than of any other hair tonic in America. It's the ideal care for scalp and hair. Buy, try Vaseline hair tonic. Tonight's story begins in the high school auditorium at River's End. The people have been gathered here to welcome a returning soldier. But now the celebration has come to a close, and on the platform, Dr. Christian and Judy are talking to the guest of honor. Well, how does it feel to come back to the old town as a celebrity, Susan? Oh, I was never so self-conscious in my life, Dr. Christian. You'd almost think I'd done something. Well, I wouldn't call what you and the other nurses on Bataan did nothing. Not to mention those years in the Jap prison camp. Do you expect to stay in Riversend now? Oh, I'm afraid not, Dr. Christian. I'm still in the army, you know, and there's still wounded boys to be taken care of. But I've got 30 days to rest and play, and then I report for active duty. Well, in the meantime, Riversend is yours, Sue. You can have anything you want. Well, there's only one thing I really want. Hmm? I made up my mind to that during some of those days and nights when things looked blackest. I promised myself that if I ever did get back to River's End, I'd be married just as quickly as I could. Married? Oh, Sue, that's wonderful. I should say it is. Who is the lucky man? Well, <laughs> he doesn't know it yet, but it's Hillary Dana. Oh, oh, you couldn't have picked a better man, Susan. Hillary is a mighty fine young fellow. Our most elusive bachelor. Six foot four, hunk of bashful man. How'd you work it, Sue? Judy is right. <laughs> you know, he blushes when he passes a strange girl on the sidewalk. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but that's not his fault. He's never had much time for girls. He's worked hard all his life, and he's done all right for himself. He owns the mills now. And now that I remember, Sue, you always were rather fond of Hillary. Oh, I've been crazy about him ever since we were kids in school. I admit it unblushingly. <laughs> and you say he doesn't know it? <laughs> oh, I'm afraid you'll have to rope and tie him. Have you mapped out a campaign yet, Sue? Well, not exactly, but there's an old saying in the army, over, under, around, or through. <laughs> <laughs> Since you've served under General MacArthur, maybe I'd better see Hillary at once and advise immediate unconditional surrender. Say, <laughs> <laughs> hey, what do you suppose was the reason he uh, didn't come to the meeting tonight? Too bashful, I told you. Oh, he was here. I saw him as I came in sitting way in the back near the door. Oh. Well, he might have come back to say hello, at least. Among all those people, not Hillary Dana. <laughs> oh, I don't know. He's been pretty busy. What with keeping the mill going and trying to get into the army, he's had his hands full. And I suppose the board thought he was more essential at the mill than in the army. Absolutely. I voted to keep him there myself. That hasn't helped his shyness any either. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's my mother waving at me from the, from the door. I'll have to run. Good night, Dr. Christian. Bye, Judy. Good night, good night. Susan. A and Sue, so, good luck. Dr. Christian, do you realize what you've done? <laughs> now, what do you suppose possessed an old bachelor like me to play Cupid anyway?
Hello. Is the boss in? Oh, come in, Dr. Christian. I'm glad to see you. Hello, Hillary. This place seems awfully quiet for a lumber mill. We're shut down for repairs. Sometimes I worried about which would wear out first, me, the Japs, or this plant. Somebody stick out this way? Oh, no, no. I was just passing by, and I thought I'd say hello. Uh, didn't I see you at the meeting last night in honor of Susan Anderson, our heroine of Baton? Oh, yeah, that was me cheering the loudest. Didn't she look wonderful, Dr. Christian? What I would have done to some of those ugly apes if you and the rest of that draft board had just let me into the army. Now, there's no use going into that again, Hillary. You've been more valuable to the war effort right here at home. Uh, maybe so. But anybody could have run this old mill. Matt Gorman, for instance. Why, oh, he's uh, a... We were talking about you after the meeting last night. Um, Susan asked about you especially. Oh, did she, Dr. Christian? Honestly? Yes. Well, she, uh, she wondered why you didn't stay afterwards and say hello to her. Well, I... Oh, Dr. Christian, I, I couldn't do that. Why not? Susan is an old friend of yours. You were kids together. Yes, I know, but she's gone so far beyond me. Gosh, she's in the army, a captain, and here I am, just another big lug making sawdust out of trees. Nonsense. Susan was uh, quite hurt because you didn't stay. She'd been looking forward to seeing you. Well, if I'd have known that, I... Oh, gosh, I wouldn't hurt Sue for anything. Oh, but, Doctor, I never was much with the ladies. With men, I'm all right, but... Girls, I just freeze up. Well, if uh, I were a young man and a lovely girl like Susan Anderson was interested enough to want to see me, I'd put on my best front, dig up the biggest box of candy I could find, and be at her front door about 8 o'clock tonight. Yeah? Well, how do you know? You're an old bachelor yourself. Yes, I know, but uh, I was young once, and uh, I wasn't as bashful as you are. This is Dr. Christian. Oh, Dr. Christian, it's nice of you to call. Uh, I just want to tell you that uh, everything's going to be all right. I've started the ball rolling. You what? What are you talking about? Uh, I, I fixed it. I saw Hillary and Dana this afternoon, and, and unless I'm very much mistaken, you'll have a caller this evening. You mean he Hill's coming here? Yes, of course, and from then on, it's up to you. <laughs> Good luck, Susan. Oh, thanks, Dr. Christian. I I'll do something nice for you someday. Oh, there's the bell now. I think he's here. Uh, I'll call back later, Susan. I'm anxious to hear what happens. Goodbye. Hillary. Mm. <laughs> Hillary. Susan. Susan. Why, well, you kissed me. Right on the front porch. <laughs> of course I did. I'm glad to see you. You'll never know how glad. Oh, there were times when I wondered if I'd ever see you again. Oh, yes, I, I know. I, I felt the same way. And there was no word from out there or anything. Oh, so let's not talk about that now. Come on in. Come on, come in. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah. I was so busy looking at you, I forgot. Gosh, you, you look wonderful in that dress. Even better than in the uniform last night. Oh, thank you. Dad had to go to a lodge meeting. Mother ran over next door for a while, so I'm having the time of my life keeping house. It's so wonderful to be in a home again. You, you mean you're all alone? Yes. <laughs> Isn't it fun? We can have a nice, long talk with no one to interrupt. Well, I, I, I don't know whether I should be here or not. Under the circumstances. Oh, me. nonsense. Don't be silly. Here, let me take your hat. Oh, that's all right. I'll just put it over here. Oh, hey. Not on Mother's goldfish bowl. She'd have a fit. <laughs> there, that's better. Well, uh, shall we sit down? Yes. I, uh, I can't stay very long, though. Oh, I... don't, don't sit way over there, Hill. Come on, sit here on the sofa where I can talk to you. Well, Susan, I don't know. I... Yeah, that's much better. Don't you think? Much more comfortable and cozy. <laughs> Yeah. Kind of warm over here, though. We've, uh, we've been getting a lot of warm weather lately, haven't we? I like warm weather, though. Don't you? Yes, I think it's nice. I, uh, 
I suppose you had warm weather on the islands, too. Oh, yes. We had all kinds of weather. <laughs> Good and bad. Yeah, yeah. That's one thing about the weather. There, there's so much of it. <laughs> yes. I, um... I hope you won't think I'm snooping, Hill, but, uh... What have you got in the package? Huh? Uh, oh, oh, I forgot. Uh, that, that, that candy for you. Oh. It's the biggest I could find. Dr. Christian. I mean, well, I, I, I hope it's all right, Sue. Kind, candy's kind of hard to find these days. Oh, thank you, Hill. That's awfully sweet of you. It seems to me I'll never get enough candy to eat ever again. We have some? No, no, thanks. Well, I think I'd better be going. Oh, no. Well, you've only been here a minute, and there's so many things to talk about. I want to know everything that happened while I was away. And, uh, if you miss me. Oh, yes, I... Uh, yes, I miss you a lot, Sue. I used to think of you often. Wonder how you were, what you were doing. If you were married. Married? Me? Well, uh... Whatever made you think a thing like that? <laughs> Everybody gets married sometime, don't they? Or, or thinks about it. Surely you thought about it, you know? Sort of girl you like to marry? Well, I, 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 I guess I have. Mm. Thought about it, I mean. Uh, well, tell me, uh, what do you think about it? Well, I think, uh... I think I'd better be going, Sue. I, I, I just remembered some work I've got to do down at the oh, mill. Oh, sit down. You're not going, really. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, but I've got to. That work's mighty important. I... Where's my hat? Here, look out the goldfish bowl. Oh. oh, my gosh. I'm sorry, Sue. I mean, I... Oh, goodbye. Here, you forgot your hat. Oh. Now what? Hello. Is that you, Susan? This is Dr. Christian. Yes, I think it's me, but I'm not sure of anything right now. Did he arrive all right? Oh, yes, he arrived all right. Oh, then everything's perfect, eh? I knew it would be. Uh, I had it all fixed. Yes, you're quite a fixer, Dr. Christian. How are you on goldfish bowls? Goldfish bowls? I don't understand. Ours is in a thousand pieces, fish flopping all over the place. But uh, where's Hillary? Isn't he there? No, he just fell out the front door. And you're not engaged? Not yet. You're not doing very well by me, Doctor. You'll have to change your prescription. Well, uh, we'll see. But uh, don't let me keep you. Remember, you've got to rescue the goldfish. <laughs> But, Judy, we know that Susan is in love with Hillary, and I'm sure that Hillary is in love with Susan. I thought if I just got them together, the rest would take care of itself. Oh, something must have gone wrong. Everything went wrong from what Sue told me on the phone. Uh, she's coming over later. Hill's a fine boy, except he's, uh, he's too bashful, and Susan's a lovely girl. Uh, they'll make a, a splendid couple. Well, I'm willing to do anything I can, because I think she's entitled to all the happiness in the world. Well, Hugh, come oh. in. I'm glad to see you. Good morning, Dr. Christian. Hello, Judy. Oh, we were just talking about you, Hill, and then you walked. You couldn't say anything so bad that I wouldn't agree with you this morning. Oh. I took your advice and called on Susan Anderson last night. Well, nothing to be glum about. Most young fellows would be proud to call on Susan. Oh, I am. I mean, I was. I, I had it all pictured in my mind, how I was going to act and what I was going to say. And what happened? Oh, that doggone bashfulness of mine. I just froze up. I couldn't talk, and everything I did was wrong. Oh. Susan was swell, but the nicer she tried to be, the more scared I got. I finally knocked over the goldfish bowl, and the next thing I knew, I was halfway home. My hat still left. <laughs> Well, it sounds to me like you had a fine case of buck fever. <laughs> I'll never be able to face her again. Oh, now, don't be silly. You've got to go back after your hat. Oh, oh no, no, I couldn't, Dr. Christian. It, it wasn't a very good hat anyway. Oh, Dr. Christian, stop teasing him. I'm only trying to help. You've got a good excuse to go right over to Susan's. Walk in and say, Susan, I want my hat. And while I'm here, I might as well tell you that I love you. Oh! <gasps> 
Oh, Dr. Christian, that's no way to propose to a girl. Well, if you know a better way, maybe you'd better coach the hill. Hmm? I've got to run down to the drugstore for a few minutes. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Dr. Christian. I'll, I'll go with you. Uh, I'll only be away a few minutes. You stay better here and, and, and get some pointers. Well, I... I'd, uh, he's gone. <laughs> You're not afraid of me, are you, Hillary? Um, yes, uh, a little. I can't help it. I guess I'll never get over it. Well, you will have to get over it if you're ever going to get married. You've got to propose to Susan somehow. Yeah, but how would you do it? I mean, if you were me and I were Susan, that is. Well, now let me see. If I were a young man in love with a girl, I'd find a chance to sit beside her. Mm. And, uh, well, wait, let me give you a lesson. Now, you sit there. Uh, here? Yeah. And I'll sit here. Then, now, uh, I'll pretend I'm Susan. Now, put your arms around me and say, Sweetheart, I love you. Will you marry me? Oh, gosh. All that? Yes. Now, try it. You think you can say it? I, I don't know. I, I... Go on, go on, go on. Sweetheart, I love you. Will you marry me? I'm afraid you'll have to improve on that a lot. You've got to say it with conviction. Now, try it with your arms around me. Uh, you mean... All the way around? <laughs> of course. I don't mind being a guinea pig. Come on, try it. Uh, <clears throat> uh, sweetheart, I, I love you. Uh, will you marry me? <laughs> oh, Hill, that's awful. Put some feeling into it. Say it as if you meant it. Sweetheart, I love you. Will you marry me? Oh. I hope I'm not interrupting anything important. Susan! Oh, my gosh. I, uh, where, where's my hat? <laughs> well, is this something I should like out to No, you can't get out through there. That's a medicine cabinet. Huh? Oh. oh, thanks. Goodbye. Well, I seem to have arrived at the wrong moment. Oh, Susan, no, be I think... Susan, I can stop laughing. Hey, what in the world happened to Hill? He almost ran over me. <laughs> Well, I was acting on your suggestion, Dr. Christian. I was trying to help him overcome his bashfulness, and I was doing a pretty good job, too, when Susan came bursting in. Oh, <laughs> so that's what was going on. No wonder he ran. <laughs> he forgot his hat again. <laughs> <laughs> well, he'll run out of hats before long. Uh, yeah. Susan, I'm afraid the only way you'll ever capture that young man is to surround him. <laughs> Dr. Christian, I'm glad you're here. Why? I'm not late, am I? No, but something terrible has happened. Nobody's been hurt, I hope. Oh, it's worse than that. Hillary Dana has disappeared. Susan's been trying to find him, and I've been helping her. He isn't in town any place. Oh, maybe he's hiding from Sue. I don't think he'd be hard to find. I wouldn't be surprised if I could put my finger right on him. Hmm? Oh, Dr. Christian... Has Judy told you? That uh, Hillary disappeared? Yes, but I wouldn't worry if I were you. Dr. Christian thinks he might know where Hillary is, Sue. You do, Dr. Christian, know where? Tell me quick. Well, of course, I'm not positive, but if I were looking for Hill, I... Well, he has a little fishing camp up the river. Uh, just uh, follow the river road north about five miles past the sawmill. Take the crossroad to the left. It leads right into the camp. Oh, thank you, Dr. Christian. Uh, Judy and I will follow soon. But, Dr. Christian, what can we do if Hillary's there? Susan won't need us. I'm not so sure. This time I suggest a direct attack, Susan. If that doesn't work, don't worry. Judy and I will be there in time to save the day. <laughs> As a last resort, we might all have to gang up on him. <laughs> You look so fierce and determined topping that log, I was almost afraid to speak to you. You didn't hear me drive up? It's working off a rage. It's been mad for 24 hours, and the more I think, the madder I get. Fine specimen I am. Everybody else was in the war fighting. And here I sat, running a sawmill. 
I can't even talk to a girl. I can't say what I want to, no, no matter how hard I now, try. Now, just put down that axe and sit down a minute. There, yeah, on the log. Now, I won't have you blaming yourself for things that aren't your fault. But I, I just don't be able to do anything about it. I just freeze up. Oh, let's not talk about that, Hewlett. Oh, what a beautiful log cabin. Did you build it? Susan, on the day we got the bad news from Baton, I would admit that that was the end for you, that you wouldn't come back. So I started building the cabin. I guess I was building it for you. How are you? When things got too tough, I'd come out here and work on it. I'd imagine how you'd look in the room. Sometimes I, I could almost hear your voice. Susan, do you think you could ever live in it with me? I'd never ask for anything else in the world, Hill. Susan! Susan, I, I've done it! I've, I've proposed to you! And I've accepted you! I, oh, I, I, I didn't realize... Don't worry, Dana, it's too late now. Don't you dare freeze up until you kiss me. <laughs> Susan! Hello! Oh. Susan! Uh, Hello, Are you here? Here we are, Dr. Christian, over here. Oh, I hope Judy and I are not intruding. Oh, I, I should say not, Dr. Christian. I, I've got to tell somebody or I'll bust. You'll probably be surprised, but Susan and I are going to be married. Yes, sir, I, I proposed and Susan accepted me. Would you believe it? You proposed? <laughs> You're right, I am surprised. <laughs> Congratulations, Hillary. And Sue, you got the best man in Rivers End. I suppose the wedding will be soon, won't it? Well, I don't know exactly. You know, it's partly up to Uncle Sam. Maybe not until I'm out of the service for good. Oh, that reminds me of what I came out here for. It seems the Army has decided to release all those who were in prison camps for more than 60 days during the war. So Susan's release is now only a matter of formality. The curtain descends on another Dr. Christian prize play with our star, Jean Herschel, waiting to greet you. But first, here's a message from Judy. Industrial workers, textile workers, lab technicians, mechanics, all in totally different jobs, and yet they have a common complaint. Red, painfully tender hands. Yes, daily contact with irritants. Machine oils, chemicals, and dyes, plus hard work can make your hands red and painfully sore. But it's such a help to know how to protect your hands with Vaseline Petroleum Jelly. If you work hard with your hands, even if it's housework, give them this before and after protection with Vaseline Petroleum Jelly. Before beginning work, smooth Vaseline Petroleum Jelly on your hands, forming a protective film Vaseline Petroleum Jelly helps keep grit from grinding into your hands, safeguards against infection, and makes dirt easier to remove. Then after you wash up, apply Vaseline Petroleum Jelly again to supplement the natural skin oils washed away by strong soap. This after application of Vaseline Petroleum Jelly also hastens the healing of little cuts and scrapes on the hands. Try this Vaseline Petroleum Jelly before and after protection. You'll be surprised how much better your hands feel. And remember, there are many petroleum jellies on the market, but only one bears a trademark Vaseline. This trademark, owned by the Teesbill Manufacturing Company, is your guarantee of absolute purity. And now here is Jean Herschel. Thank you very much. Tonight's play was written by Ray Appleby, author and actor, and uh, you've heard his work on many radio programs. Next week, we plan to present The Little Carpenter by Richard Kaler of Brooklyn, New York. We invite you all to listen next Wednesday evening to the Vaseline program, same time and same station. And until then, I'll say good night. Here's a friendly tip. If cold weather brings tender chap lips for quick relief, quick healing, get Vaseline Lip Ice. With Vaseline Lip Ice, chap lips begin to heal almost instantly. Only 10 and 25 cents of druggists everywhere. Vaseline Lip Ice.
Don't forget a new Dr. Christian Prize play every week at this hour. Don't miss them. Bob Anderson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.